So we've spent some time looking at M forms, how they act on vectors from the tangent space T, P, R, N. We've also looked at differential M forms, how to integrate these differential M forms over parametrized M spaces in R, N. We've also looked at the exterior derivative of differential M forms. So today we wanna to take a step back, introduce some new notation, and look at an interesting property among the space of all forms. Okay, so the notation that I wanna introduce is this big wedge. So we've got this big wedge M R N, that we're gonna use that to mean the vector space of all M forms on R N. Let's recall that that has this basis made up of elementary M forms, and those are given by dx i1 wedge dx i2 all the way up to dx i m, and here i1 through i m make up something called a multi-index. Sometimes we use this dx sub capital I to be that multi-index, and here that is an increasing sequence of numbers that's bound between 1 and n. And then just to be technical about the relationship between differential forms and just forms, the space of differential forms is a module over the space of all forms. So notice I have this direct sum of zero forms, one forms, two forms, all the way up to n forms on Rm. And this forms some sort of like associative algebra, associative but non-commutative algebra where the wedge product is our multiplication there. And then you know any algebra has some sort of module structure and these differential forms are form a module over the uh, space of you know forms. Okay, great. So now what I also want to recall, which we proved in a previous video, is the dimension of the space of M forms on Rn is this binomial coefficient N choose M then also there are all these binomial coefficient identities, including this one that says n choose m is the same thing as n choose m minus one. Now, since those numbers are the same, that kind of brings up the following obvious question, and that is, is there a relationship between the space of m forms and the space of n minus m forms on Rn? And obviously what I mean is a relation that is deeper than just their dimension being the same given this binomial coefficient identity. And there is, and it's called the Hodge duality, and it's built off of this thing called the Hodge operator. So that's what I want to define first, is this thing called the Hodge operator, and then we'll look at a bunch of examples of this Hodge operator acting on M forms. So the Hodge operator, which you generally write as a star, it's a linear operator from the space of M forms into the space of n minus m forms on Rn, and it does the following. So it takes as an input an m form, so we're assuming that dxi is an m form, and it needs to output an n minus m form, which we'll call dxj. But obviously we need some sort of rule for the relationship of dxi and dxj, and there will be a rule, and that is the following, such that dxi wedge dxj equals dx1 wedge all the way up to dxn. So in other words, that elementary n form. And remember the space of n forms on Rn has dimension n choose n, which is just one. So you can kind of think of dxj as the completion of dxi. So there's also a non-coordinate definition of this Hodge operator, but we're taking a really elementary approach to all this stuff, and so we're working with coordinates the whole time. So for the rest of the video, I wanna look at some concrete examples, starting really, really simply with R2. And after we do R2, I think you'll see that we started at R2 instead of R1 just because there's not really anything going on at R1. So notice at R2, we have three different spaces. We have zero forms, and this is one dimensional, and it's given by this like lambda zero R2. Then we have one forms. That's gonna be two dimensional, and it has that notation, so that big wedge one and then R2, and then we have two forms, and that's also one dimensional, so that's this uh, wedge two R2, great. And now, given that our Hodge operator should go from um, 
m forms to n minus m forms, then that means our Hodge operator should take this guy to itself because two minus one is equal to one. And then it should take zero forms to two forms. And then it should take two forms back to zero forms. Great. So let's just work this out one thing at a time. So let's look first at zero forms. So notice zero forms are going to be spanned by just the number one, because here we've got like an empty multi-index if we're thinking about that. So all we need to do is decide what this star operator does to the number one, but that's clearly just do dx wedge dy. Good. So now let's look at one forms. So one forms are spanned by dx and dy, so we need to figure out where each of those go under the Hodge operator. So if we do star dx, we'll end up with dy, and let's see why that is. That's because our goal is for dx um, wedge star dx to be equal to dx wedge dy, but that's exactly what we get here. But now let's look at what star dy would be and notice that that's gonna be negative dx. So let's talk our ways through that. So that's because we want dy wedge star dy to be equal to dx wedge dy. But in order for that to be true, because of the anti-commutativity, we need to put a minus dx there. And so now when we commute the dx and the dy, notice that minus sign is going to cancel, and that's going to leave us with dx wedge dy. Okay, great. And now I'll leave it to you to think about what happens to two forms, but it's going to be essentially exactly what we have right here, just with the star on the right-hand side and instead of the left-hand side. Okay, I'll clean this up, and then next we'll look at 0, 1, 2, and 3 forms on R3. Okay, so now we're going to look at R3, and I'm going to skip the zero forms and the three forms because that's pretty trivial. In general, the zero forms and the n forms are pretty trivial when you're working on Rn, so which means I need to look at one forms and two forms. Notice one forms and two forms will be dual to each other because one plus two is equal to three. So what we want to do is look at the action of this Hodge operator on one forms on R3. Notice those are going to give us two forms on R3. And then we're also going to look at the reverse direction as well. So in other words, we want to decide what the Hodge operator does to two forms on R3. Keeping in mind, those are going to produce one forms on R3. Great. So we know the space of one forms on R3 is spanned by dx, dy, and dz. So we really just need to figure out what happens to each of those three basis vectors. So if we do star dx, so notice that needs to involve dy and dz. And in fact, it'll be just dy wedge dz. Because now notice if we do dx wedge dy wedge dz, we get exactly what we want. So let's maybe remind ourselves of our goal for all of these, and that's the following. If we do omega, which is an m form, and then wedge it with star omega, we should be getting dx wedge dy wedge dz. That's the defining property of this Hodge operator. And in general, if we were in n forms, we would have dx1 wedge dx2 all the way up to dxn over there. So that obviously works for this one right here. Now let's look at star dy. So notice that's going to have to involve dx and dz. But we need a minus sign built into this because there'll be some commuting that has to go on. So let's go ahead and point that out. That's because if we take dy wedge dx wedge dz and we put this in alphabetical order, we have to pick up a minus sign because we move this dx past this dy. So we'll get minus dx wedge dy wedge dz. So our Hodge operator has to include a minus sign to counteract this minus sign from the commutativity. So now let's look at the last one form. So we'll look at star dz. And in this case, this will be just dx wedge dy. And that's because if we take dz and wedge it into dx with dy, 
dz is going to commute past two things, which is going to pick up a negative one squared. So this is going to be negative one squared dx wedge dy wedge dz. But since negative one squared is one, we don't have an extra minus sign, so it all works out. Okay, so now let's look on the other side if we do the Hodge operator on a two form to get a one form. So maybe the first two form we'll look at is dx wedge dy, and notice this will be just dz. So that's pretty clear cut because everything is like in alphabetical order. Now next, let's do the Hodge operator on dx wedge dz, and notice that this will be minus dy. And that's because of essentially the same thing that we noticed right here. Notice that if we take dx wedge dz wedge dy, we'll have to pick up a minus sign when we commute this dy into alphabetical order. So we'll pick up a minus sign here and then we have dx wedge dy wedge dz. But now to counteract that minus sign that we get um, from the commutativity, we'll put a minus sign into the output of the Hodge operator there. Okay, great. And then maybe finally we have the Hodge operator onto dy wedge dz, and this will be equal to dx. And again, kind of for the same reason as we saw down here, there'll be two things that dx passes through, so we'll pick up a negative one squared, which is a positive one, so we don't need to worry about like fixing the sign here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and we're gonna do like a little bigger example to finish it off. We wanna finish this video off looking at the Hodge duality of two forms on R5 and three forms on R5. So let's just recall that our star operator is defined in the following way. So it takes an elementary M form DXI, in this case an elementary two form, and it turns it into um, a three form so that when you wedge them together, you get dx1 wedge all the way up to dx5. And if we were over rn, that would be all the way up to dxn. And then you extend that linearly across this entire vector space of m forms, or in this case, two forms on r5. So we want to look at this two form on r5 omega, which is dx1 wedge dx2 plus 2 dx3 wedge dx4 plus 7 dx1 wedge dx5. So now we'll star omega, but then by the linearity, we know that all we have to do is star each of these individually, and we can factor the coefficients out as needed. Okay. So that means this dx1 wedge dx2 will be built out of things involving dx3 wedge dx4 wedge dx5. And then we just have to def decide if we need a plus or a minus here. And in fact, we just need a plus there because if you wedge this starting thing with the ending thing, you get exactly dx1 wedge up to dx5. So these guys right here are related via the star operator. Now let's move on to the next part. So we'll have two, and then since we have dx3 wedge dx4 there, we know that we need dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx5, and then we just have to figure out the order. So let's notice if we were to think about dx3 wedge dx4 being in the front here and how many times commutation would have to happen. Notice that dx4 would pass past two guys on its way to the right position and dx3 would pass past the same two guys on the way to the correct position which would give us an overall factor of minus one to the four which is obviously plus one so we get a plus there. Great. But now since this is a dx1 wedge dx5, we know that we'll have a 7 dx2 wedge dx3 wedge dx4. Now we just have to figure out the sign. So if we think about a dx1 wedge dx5 being in front and then commuting it until it's in the right order, notice that the dx1 is already in the correct position, but the dx5 needs to pass past 1, 2, three things to get in the correct position, picking up an overall minus one cubed or a minus sign. So we figured out the Hodge operator of all of these components, which means we have figured out what star omega is in this case.
Now I just want to point out how we can extend this Hodge operator to differential forms and you can do that in the following way. So let's say that omega is a differential m form on Rn. So that means we can write it as this sum over multi indices. So that's like I1 up to I m like we described up there. And then we have these differentiable function fi and then dxi. So how we extend the Hodge operator to this space is um, star omega is going to be equal to this sum over the same multi indices and then fi, but then we'll have star dxi here. Great. So that's kind of an obvious extension. But now that we've kind of seen how it works for these examples, it's not so hard to figure out how it works for these. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to come back and see how this Hodge operator, along with the exterior derivative, um, allows us to rewrite some of the operators from Calculus 3 in this new world of differential forms and exterior derivatives and stuff. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.